Now, this is uh, an introduction here to the passage study layouts, but the most powerful tool that Verbum offers you probably for studying the, a passage is the passage guide. And so in the second part of this video, I'd like to go over the passage guide with you and show you some of my favorite sections. There are so many tools in the passage guide that we won't be able to see all of them, but at least I want to introduce you to some of the ones that I use the most. The first section here that's of great interest is the commentary section. And what this does is it's pulling from my entire library all of the commentaries that I have that discuss the passage I'm studying. So I have here uh, in the order of priori priority, and of course in your library, you can prioritize your resources from the prioritize resource option, which is available here from the, the panel menu. And it will respect whatever order you have here of the, uh, the, the, re the, the commentaries. So that's this first tab is priority, and I can uh, quickly navigate to whatever uh, commentary I'm interested in. Notice here there's also some different tabs that you may want to uh, at times use. I may want to look at the commentaries organized by series or by author. Here you can see them uh, organized in that way. Or maybe by denomination. I can see uh, you know, those authors who are Catholic or who are the patristic authors and so on or also by type. If I'm interested specifically in, in exegetical commentaries, I can open up these from here. And also finally, there's an option to see them by era. So if I'm really interested in studying the patristic thought on this passage, I can quickly come here to Nicene or even medieval passages and take a look at some of those. So this is the commentary section up here. Notice as well on this tab, there is a, uh, a question mark here, and this is available on almost all of these tools. If you're not sure what a tool does, just hover your mouse over that, and it will give you a quick description of it with the option then to click on it to open up the help file and get even more information. Oftentimes, as well, these tools have settings, and here I could choose this, uh, this settings menu, and what it does is it allows me to filter down the commentaries that I'm seeing by a certain collection or a group that uh, are available here. Uh, in this case, I will leave it in the default, uh, but know that that is an option. Now, I want to give you as well a tip about the passage guide. If you notice, as I scroll down here in the passage guide, almost all of these sections are closed. And that uh, is a, an option that I chose in order to allow the passage guide to open up instantaneously. When you open up the passage guide, if all of the sections are open, what's going to happen is every single section of the passage guide is going to be running one or more searches in your library and bringing together all of the information that you need. And that can take a little bit of time sometimes. It might uh, slow the, the program down a little bit. So what I recommend that you do in the passage guide and in other guides in general is that you right click on any of the headers in the passage guide and choose uh, collapse all. And what that will do is it'll collapse all of these sections. And then when you want to open up one of these selections, simply select the option, just click on the header, and Verbum will run the search. You can see now Verbum is running the search on liturgy. And what it has done is search through all of the different liturgical resources that I have in my library. And now I'm seeing where this reading appears in the Catholic daily readings in the, in the Mass. I can see here that it appears in uh, on Thursday of the 18th week in Ordinary Time, years 1 and 2, for example. So this is the liturgy section. If we continue scrolling down here, there are some uh, sections that can allow us to study this passage in relationship to other passages in Scripture. Parallel passages, for example, will show me the parallel passages in the Synoptic Gospels where uh, uh, this same encounter appears. So I can compare that. How did Mark and how did Luke speak about this. So this gives me easy access to that. The cross references tab can also be very useful. This is taken from the treasury of scripture knowledge, which is a, a large cross reference database. And I can see passages that are related. For example, here, Isaiah 22, 22. I will place on his shoulder the key of the house of David. He shall open and none shall shut and he shall shut and none shall open. This is an important passage as background for this. Jesus is giving the keys to Peter, right, where Eliakim is going to 
received these keys as prime minister of King David. So if I want to get some ideas about what passages might be in the background, the cross-references is a great tool. And the next tool here in the passage guide is also a cross-reference tool, and it's called Important Passages. And whereas the cross-references was only taken from the Treasury of Scripture Knowledge, Important Passages is a, a sort of a meta cross-reference tool. It's a super cross-reference tool where scholars at Verbum have taken all of the commentaries, all the lexicons, all the different cross-reference databases that they have, and brought them together and seen what are the most common cross-references in each type of resource. So here I can see, for example, that these are some of the important passages that are related, some of the cross-references that are related to this passage. And I can actually filter by the type. So I could choose to just look at what lexicons think are important passages. And now Verbum has uh, filtered this down to what, what, do, what, what are the passages that are cross-references that lexicons usually refer to when they refer to this pericope, to this passage of scripture. So this can be very useful, uh, and you can also organize them by type if you prefer. If I go back here to uh, all types, you can then see uh, the, the different types that are available uh, and drill in on those. So if I want to just focus on, in on what commentaries consider uh, as important cross-references, those are available here. So that's important passages. The next section here is called important words. And what this, this is a similar uh, type of study, except instead of passages, what's going on here is that the scholars at Faith Life have brought together all of these different commentaries and lexicons and seen what are the important words. And they're placed here in order of priority. So the first word here is Petros, Peter. If I want to, I can uh, open this up and it shows some of the passages here where the word Peter appears. And it invites me to run a Lema in Passage guide. And if I click on this, it opens up a special tool called Lema in Passage that will give me results in my commentaries where commentaries have discussed this particular word, the word Petros in Greek or Peter. And I can go ahead and, and look at those. So a very useful tool that allows me to drill in on a specific word and see where commentaries in my library have commented on that word. The next tool is Atlas, and uh, I love this tool. It allows you to get, uh, it'll take me directly to maps that have to do with this passage. So I just opened up this map here from Jesus Visits Tyre, Sidon, and Caesarea Philippi. And you can see here on the, the left, there is a key that I can open up. And what it shows me here is that uh, this is Jesus's visit to these cities and the green uh, line here indicates Jesus's likely route to Caesarea Philippi. And I can go ahead and zoom in on this map. And this is really helpful to get some context about a passage. Notice, for example, how far north up Caesarea Philippi is compared to Nazareth, and if I go even further down south to Jerusalem. So this is a, a, a really striking in, in incident of Jesus kind of going out of his way, maybe, to go to a specific location to be with his apostles. It can give me some interesting insight in my study of this passage. The next sections are biblical places, people, things, and events. And what these sections all do is point to the fact book references that are present in the passage. And I can open these, uh, open up the fact book to study any of these locations uh, more. I also have the option here on my Bibles, of course, to turn on the fact book visual filter, which will allow me here, if I click on Caesarea Philippi, it gives me the same option to open this up directly from my Bible. After the biblical places, people, things, and events, there's an interesting section here called outlines. And what this section does is it brings together from your different commentaries and Bible dictionaries those places where an outline has been given of the passage and its relationship to the work as a whole, in this case to the Gospel of Matthew. For example, if I come down here to uh, this commentary, in this case by Daniel Durkin, his introduction to the New Testament, he gives a, a, an outline here of the Gospel of Matthew 
and I can see where this passage fits in in the Gospel of Matthew. Here he says, for example, that this is within the section where the Messiah forms the church and prophesies his passion. And then this will be followed by the Messiah and the church on the way to the passion. So within this section of the Messiah, right, this Davidic Messiah forming his church, we have this moment uh, with Peter. After this, we have a literary typing section that can give me an introduction into what type of literary genre this is. And figurative language. What are some of the figurative language that has been identified by scholars? I can see here, for example, the keys as authority. Jesus giving the keys, right? The keys here being a symbol of authority. is giving authority to Peter. There's also a section on cultural concepts. And here, scholars at Faith Life have classified hundreds of different concepts and searched through ancient literature to find moments in which these concepts are discussed. If I want to study the concept like church or God as Father, I can search in my library and both in the scriptures and in extra biblical literature, see some of the references to this concept and study uh, that more in depth. So it can be very useful when you're trying to broaden and understand the, the scriptures within their broader cultural concept. One of my favorite tools here then is ancient literature. And here scholars have literally classified hundreds of thousands of references from uh, ancient sources, both in the church fathers and in ancient Jewish sources uh, and Gnostic sources and so on, all brought together and we can here get a very quick glance of what did uh, ancient sources have to say about this passage. I could open up, for example, here from, from Ambrose, who speaks about, uh, he says that uh, this passage in light of the, the a schism that's going on at his time, where he says, they wickedly deny that sins can be forgiven even in the church, whereas it was said to Peter that I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and so on. So he's relating this, St. Ambrose, relating this to the power to forgive sins that the church has received. And if I'm not sure who he's talking about, I can simply scroll up here and notice this heading. He's complaining of the novations. Maybe I don't know who those are. Verbum has so many tools that you can always figure these things out. If I simply right-click on this, I can open up the Wikipedia tool and read a little about, bit about the Novatians, who had denied uh, the, the, the right of the church to reincorporate those who had denied the faith, right? whereas uh, the Bishop of Rome and uh, the other Orthodox bishops always uh, defended the possibility of the church forgiving the sins of even the most grievous sins. So that's the ancient literature tool. This is followed up by biblical theologies and systematic theologies. And these are different uh, theology books that you have in your library. I'll just open up here the systematic theologies to give you an idea of how these work. And they're organized into different subjects. So maybe if I'm studying Christology, I can open up this. And here I see, for example, some references from St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, right, a great medieval uh, theologian. Or here's some modern uh, sources, such as Balthazar and other, other great modern theologians. So this can be very helpful uh, if you're studying systematic theology or biblical theology as well. There's then a section here called confessional documents. And these sections I can choose by these tabs here how to organize them. I'll just go ahead and click on resource so you can get an idea of what type of resources are available here. Notice here we have the decrees of the Council of Trent. We have the Vatican II documents, UCAT, so many different uh, references of uh, creeds and confessional documents. So if I want to see what did, what did the Council of Trent have to say about this passage, or what did Vatican II have to say about this passage, here it is in, in confessional documents. So very, very useful. Then we have sermons, sermon outlines. If you have any homilies in your library, those will appear here. Themes and thematic outlines. I'm going to skip over these. I want to go on to the Catholic Topical Index, which is a great tool. It brings together, made by scholars at Verbum, and it brings together from your library all sorts of topics that have to do with passages. So these are all topics that in some way are related to the passage that we're studying here. 
So if I want to uh, study, for example, the, the topic of infallibility or of the keys of the kingdom, I could choose that here. And here I see a, a number of references from the scripture, from church teachings that speak about the keys of the kingdom, from the liturgy, canon law, and ecclesiastical writers. So a great tool to bring together all of this different information. As you can see, the passage guide just has so much information in it. It's good for you to take a moment to familiarize with it uh, so that when you're looking for something, you know exactly where you can find it. I want to finish our presentation here of the passage guide with the interactive section. Here uh, down below, there is an interactive called the Grotto of Pan. And if I open this up, it, it's a little bit small here, but I can right click on any window in, in Verbum and choose open in a floating window to make this full screen. And this is actually an image here of Caesarea Philippi. This is the present day image. And this is something that I can superimpose on this. What likely was there at the time of Jesus Christ or of any of the apostles, the Grotto of Pan, who was a, a pagan deity. So here it says that the city was well known for its worship of Pan, a god of nature and the wild. And it was located at the mouth of a cave from which the Benias River flowed. So this is a really interesting uh, presentation that can give you some context as well for this passage. Notice this rock face cliff here, right? How interesting in light of Jesus is saying to Peter that you are rock and on this rock, I will build my church. The river flowing from the cave here, right? Jesus speaking about uh, you know, the gates of Hades, that the gates of Hades will not prevail against the church. So much suggestive symbolism that Verba makes clear to us here for our study of the scriptures. So this is just a brief introduction, of course, to the passage layouts and the passage guide. I want, you, I want to invite you to pick a passage that you're interested in studying. Go deep, take a look through the passage guide, make that passage study layout your own and replace those default layouts if you're not happy with them. Feel free to play around and to dive deep into the study of scripture. Verbum offers us so many tools and it's great to take advantage, to learn how to use them, and uh, it will enrich your study of the scripture so much.